I think that's one of the best ones we've had. Maybe we'll, it's getting a little late, starting to start thinking about putting this one in the tube for you. Uh, let's get the tube cranked up and let's get this guy in. You're watching Northeast Angling. We're proud to present inshore and offshore saltwater fishing. We cover every species from fluke and porgies to stripers, sharks, and tuna. You can learn more about techniques, tackle, and destinations at neangling.com. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. charity event. It's held in New York, right in New York City. It's the only one out of Chelsea Piers. And it brings together 50 of the best guides in the New York metro region. That's guys from Long Island, Staten Island, Jersey. Really tough, tough captains. Very competitive. All for charity. All for the Fishermen's Conservation Association. Beautiful, they're in great shape. Andy, 2009 Manhattan Cup, they broke us up last year. We went two different directions. Now we're back on the same boat. We got a handle on some big fish. Very prestigious tournament this is. We got Mitch with us right now. Mitch, you got to run there? Yep. It's lock and load, baby. Fish on. This, this is, is the way this is going now, last year we suffered through some of the worst conditions you could ever imagine. This almost doesn't feel like the Manhattan Cup. No rain, no wind, no nothing. However, one thing we do have that the Manhattan Cup is amazing for, lots of big striped bass. Yep. And that's what we're here for now. Mitch now, going I don't to know if was going to win the tournament, but I'll tell you what, it's not a bad looking fish. No, it ain't. Uh, I'm going to net him up, and I'll get that rod out from under yeah. your arm here. Now, what we're doing is we're floating chunks and we're floating heads. We're not right on the Barker schools, we're on a couple pieces of structure. But there's a lot of fish on them, we marked them good on the machine. First bait down just got crippled, and I have a feeling I would not be surprised if we see 20, 30 keeper bass today, if not more. So we're looking for that one right fish. That fish probably about 15, 16 pounds. Well, I that's think a start. so. Come on back here, Mitch, you take a, a look at That's it. a start. Now what we're going to do, we got Kyle with us also. Kyle's going to be on the, on a tape measure. Andy, every fish has got to get logged. And Measured. we have a whole nother angler. Wait and girth. <laughs> and we have no whole nother we got Peter with shadow us ang angler in the, in the bow of the boat who's busy doing his own thing right now. Now, you and I aren't fishing. Oh, yeah. We're going to be moving rods around, getting baits ready, getting everything going, and letting these guys know when to drop them down. So, I mean, I think we're going to slam these fish today. I really don't. And that's a great start. I'm going to get this fish back in the measure and measure. back in the water. And off we go. Hook okay, out. let's do oh, it. A little bit of uh, bunker head on there. Here we All go. Right. Let's get a measure on this, and we'll get moving. All right. been doing this uh, tournament for three years. I look forward to it because uh, I'm out on the water with some great captains, Rich and Andy, 
Uh, the fishermen's always good. They always seem to find them, and we always do well. I uh, caught the most striped bass last year um, on Andy's boat, and I'm happy to be out here today. Yeah, and there's another one. This guy's crushing them. You know, Andy and I, we charter out of the Western Sound, and we still believe that's one of the best places in the world to get these early season striped bass. But you want to know something? We're in Jamaica Bay right now, and this area holds a lot of big fish. Along with the Western Sound, it's one of the first places to get the bunker. Okay, and we got massive schools of bunker around us now. We got three very good anglers on a boat with Andy and I, and I think we're really going to put a hurting on these fish. This is basically one big fish trap. All this bunker moves into these back harbors, and they're corralled up along the shorelines or on a structure by the bunker, I mean by the bass, and you can just pound on these fish if you get on them right. And I really, really think we're going to have a banner day today. We got overcast. For the first time in this tournament, we got good conditions. I mean, look at this. This is like glass out here. So if we stay on this fish, hopefully we don't get seen by too many other boats. Keep it quiet. Get these fish in, release them fast, measure them, and I think we'll be on our way here today. Visit the Northeast Angling website at neangling.com for nationwide saltwater charter directory, fishing news, and free fishing reports. You can also find dozens of techniques, tips, and tackle for every saltwater species. Now let's get back to the action. One of the biggest problems about this area is the amount of bluefish that are in it. I mean, a lot of people love bluefish, and it's a good problem for them, but now we're looking for bass for this tournament. So there's a lot of different things you can do to try to get away from the bluefish. We're fishing isolated structure near bunker schools, and what we're doing is what we call flatlining. We're taking these heads, these body parts of the bunker, we're flipping them out with no weight whatsoever, and we're letting them sink as natural as we can. We'll take a couple of bunker, cut them up into quarter-sized pieces, chum them up a little bit, and just get our bait going down with that chum in certain areas. And when them fish start getting up in the slick, it's one after another. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. You got one? You got one? Real, 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 real set? There he is. Man working. Wow, I was straight up and down. All right. That fish was straight up and down. All right. Oh, oh, oh my God. Rich getting a touch there. <laughs> He's gonna, well, we got a lot of fish. Rich, we got a lot of fish under the boat right now. Touch. Oh, hit him. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. Good shot. Nice. There's two. There's two. There's two. All right. Two on. Two on. All right. Let's get this fish to the surface. Wow. That fish, what was that? Right Where your bait was like 10 feet down when it got hit? A lot of fish under the boat. Just bring him in. It's not a very big fish. So get him Get him in here. Num some numbers count in this event. One of yep. the things about the Manhattan Cup is that it's not just size. Is also a quantity issue here. You got to catch a lot of fish because there's a prize for the most fish, or at least I'm pretty sure it's length, girth, times, number of fish. So everything counts. So when you get them good under the boat, we should be doing what and we're doing Kyle, now. Come yeah. back. Let's get Kyle back here. We'll get Kyle to measure these fish up. Yeah. You want to land that one, Andy? Yeah, I'm going to bring this guy right over right. here. Going to get no. the, the length and the girth on this one real Whoa. quick. We'll do that with Kyle. You know, one nice thing about these fish, we're fishing with very, very light lines, no weight. And we're hooking almost every fish in the corner because they pick it up. They only run a few feet. We lock up on them. We whack them. May not be the biggest fish in the world, but certainly one of the better looking ones. What do we got, Kyle? 27, 17. All right. All right, Kyle, another one right here. Get this guy. I'm going to rebait you guys, get you back in the game. And it's, it's overall length and girth. 27, 15. 27, 15. So those fish, almost cookie cutter. And that, that's a lot of what we see out here. We see these schools of fish come in. And it's not unusual to have five or six of almost the same size fish. Next thing you know, you're into 20-pound fish rather than eight and nine-pound fish. All I'm right. sending this guy back. All right, this one's ready. I'm going to get on this Whoa, one. Whoa, he's ready to go. We'll get that one going for you now, too. Andy, will you find out here that the big fish will hang out around the outside of the small fish, or the big fish will swim around together? You know, they come in pods. So Sometimes you get a mix. Sometimes yeah. you have nothing but big fish under the boat. That's why you wait it out. But if you spend two hours catching nothing but small fish, you may want to think about going somewhere else. Yeah. But a lot of times, you just get to come in waves. When you start getting the big ones, you're going to catch, you might catch three or four. All right, Peter. Peter's in again. Look at this man go. This bite, oh, that's, 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 that's a nice fish. fish. That's right there. We got a little bigger than the You know, one nice thing fish. about this, this doesn't seem to be slowing on. down, and we don't even have a, we don't really have the best tide yet. <laughs> yeah. And if we get this overcast to hold, I think we're going to see a lot more fish. That's a nice fish, but that was on a head, that one. one. 
Are we going to want to nut that, Rich? No, I'll lift him because he looks like he's got him pretty deep. Peter, just back up, pass me the leader. There you go. There you go, perfect, right there. That's a nice, nice fish. Right nice there. fish. All right. I'm just going to pick his pocket right here real quick. <laughs> Sorry, guy. You can keep the head, but I need my hook back. <laughs> can you get the head back in case we run out of bait, though? <laughs> and that is a nice fish. Now we got Kyle. Nice. Kyle's on a measuring stick. Come on, Kyle. Let's see what we got on this one. We're going to log all these fish because a lot of different categories, right, Andy? Yes, absolutely. Right now, we're looking good in the lots of fish category. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do we got, Kyle? I'm going to get out of the way. 34? 34. 34. Hey, I'm good, ain't I? 34 and 17. My guess. 19. 19. Oh, oh. that's Chubby. good. That's Full good. Belly. That's good. Because your head's right yeah, there, Peter. That that's why. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're going to set you one back in the water. We got a measurement on him. Nice and easy. Head first. Dorsal's up. No problem. Nice. See you, big guy. Thank you. Let's get back on the rise. So I'm, uh, I lived in the home of the Manhattan Cup, and I've flown out of JFK many, many times. I would never in my life have thought I'd be sitting off the end of the runway bringing in, bringing in big-ass stripey poos. It is amazing. There's more bait out here. You can pretty much walk on it, and I've always heard about it, but I always thought it was total fishtails, and now I'm here to tell you that it ain't. It's fantastic out here. All right. Mitch, another fish. Let me get you all the rod out of the way. Mitch has been a two-fisted angler. You know, one thing about tournament fishing, you got to try and take advantage of this as best you can. So if you, if you catch a fish, put your rod down, get another rod back in the water. That's mine and Rich's job, just trying to get fish. Bait's back in the water. That's not a bad fish. You know, just had a 35-inch fish. This one's probably like 34, 33. I'm going to lift this up, give him a little lift for me. You know, Andy, we're not using nets here unless we get a real big fish. And believe it or not, there's a reason for that. Well. This one's just about ready for you, Peter. I'm going to set it down. Certainly because there's a lot less wear and tear on the... Whoa! Well, except for that way. <laughs> no, but seriously, you know, if you look around, if you pan out here, we got a lot of boats around us. I don't see a lot of guys doing much right now. And when you get that net constantly coming up and holding it high and everything else, I mean, I know you want to share fish with people, but it's very important. You don't want these boats running down on you right now, you know, Mitch? Yeah. I mean, you see these guys out here, they're snagging bunker, they're going to their spots. We got the fish right here. We want to keep the fish here for ourselves. Sounds greedy, but this is what we need to do because we are tournament fishing right now. The other thing we want to do is that, you know, Frey will make some great nets that really reduce the loss of slime coating. Mm -hmm. If you have a fish that you can lip instead of netting, much bring them in the boat, get the hook out of them, send them on his way. Oh, trust me, when that 40-pounder comes to the side of the boat, I'll, I'll We will have the net out. I'll get the net to you, Mitch. Right. Mitch, you're going to need a slightly different tool on this one, but we'll work on him, and we'll get this back in the water. Well, I've known Mitch for a lot of years. Galapagos, Block Island, Western Sound, Montauk. We travel everywhere. Me and our other buddy, Steve, who couldn't make it today, we do a lot of fishing together. You know, I don't really worry about Mitch. I don't have to keep an eye on him. He knows what he's doing. A lot of times, I might give him a little nudge, but most of the time, we just let him do his thing. He's going to catch fish. You know he's going get, to get fish, and sometimes that's the best way. You don't want to overdo it when you're leading, a, certainly, a team expedition like this was. Visit the Northeast Angling YouTube channel for hundreds of videos, including full-length episodes, exciting clips, product reviews, and instructional videos. And now, the exciting conclusion of Northeast Angling. Large amount of fast never do this. Look at this guy. That would be the perfect must add 80 ultra point right there. Went through one of the toughest parts of the fish, penetrated because the hook is just a tough hook. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it, just, it just made the perfect little hole. It should be healed up in no time. That fish is going to be just fine. Make sure we get it back in the water and catch another one. We're working on that. Peter, that's ready to go. Grab the shot here. Okay. It's in fish pool, bud. Let's get him in. 
You know, it was pretty cool. We set up in the back of Jamaica Bay. We had four live bunkers swimming around the boat. We had a couple of big bass chasing them, bunch of bluefish on them, mostly bluefish. And what was happening is the bluefish were getting to the to the bunker, the live bunker, before the bass would. The bass would make an appearance, and a bluefish would cut him off and grab it right before he could get it. And you know what's great about fishing is there's so many different ways to catch these fish, and sometimes you need a little nudge. And it was funny, Mitch said, you know what, let me flip a head out up under them schools. Let me see if I can get something. And while these bluefish were coming up, you know, I basically hooked the head, I threw it out there for Mitch, and you know, he just let it sink to the bottom. And you know, like, not more than what, 30 seconds later, he locks up on a fish, turns out to be the biggest fish of the day. Nice, there we go, boys. Not too bad. Nice. That's the biggest bass of the day. Here we go, Mitch. Come on over here, we'll take a look at him. Yeah, here we go. Not too shabby. Just trying to. Boy, you didn't hook him by much. That's good, they'll stay good well, in the tube. get them in the boat, that's what counts. Hey, they all look the same in a bucket. Not too bad. I think that's one of the best ones we've had. Maybe we'll, it's getting a little late, starting to start thinking about putting this one in the tube for you. Uh, let's get the tube cranked up and let's get this guy in. Uh, Kyle, you want to get a get the tube and we'll, we're actually going to weigh him so we know what weight we have in the tube so another angler can beat you. <laughs> all right, let's roll. Yeah, we're all good. Overall length? 36. 36. <laughs> Girth? A lot of girl. Right. 21. Chubby Well, one thing that's awesome about these striper tubes is that this particular tube is designed for either two fish, which was the FLW, or one fish, which is the ASA, where you put one big fish in or you put a divider in and put two fish in. And the key is you don't overfill it because the water's got to drop to make bubbles. But you only fill this about two thirds of the way up, slip the fish in, the water comes up from the bottom drops down and aerates. Of course, you gotta plug it in. And we'll drop the fish in, it goes in head first. Let me just grab him there, Peter. Here we go. And he just slide him right in head first. And watch the splash. All right, a little more water on this guy. And it's amazing, these fish will go in here and they'll actually come out livelier then they went in. And, and they're like wild when they come out of these tubes. Because the fish isn't kicking around very much. It's basically just in the tube. Can't really go anywhere, like kicking around like that. We've got about 25 minutes left to fish. And this is the toughest thing about tournament fishing is that you know, you feel like you don't have the right fish. You've caught a lot of fish. You know, how do you how do you balance that part out? And you, we try to kind of balance each other's stupidity out every now and then. We make suggestions, and one guy goes, "Well, you know, we spent an hour there, and we did nothing but 12-pound fish." You know, it's weird how we have to deal with that. Yeah. You know, what 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 do you think works and doesn't work? And you know, I know we fish tournaments together a lot. Well, again, persistence. You know that, like anything else, you gotta just you gotta grind it, and that's all you can do. You know, I mean, how many times? I mean, this tournament two years ago, we won basically with 15 minutes left in the tournament. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to keep our nose to the grinder. We're going to work hard. We came back to where we started. We know there was good fish here. Okay, we didn't see too many good fish, but we had good numbers. We got the bunker here. We got everything. All, all the circumstances point to, to there should be some good fish here. Yeah. So we're going to stick it out. We're going to grind it. Hopefully yeah, because you're, you're down to your best bet. The other problem we have is we were here this morning, almost the same, similar spot in the tide. Mm -hmm. We had a heavy overcast and low pressure. Now the high pressure is building in, starting to get these bluebird skies. Bright sunshine. And that can tend to put fish like this down. However, we are fishing in 30 feet of water. Yes. We're not fishing on a flat right now. Well, you know, we got one good fish in a well. We know, obviously, we'd love to get a bigger one. Right. So we'll grind it out and then, you know, we'll take It'd what take we It'd take us too long to go somewhere else, set up, get a bite going, yeah, you know, and try and score a fish. Peter and Mitch, they did a great job today. They were hooking fish left and right. They might have swung once or twice and missed, but we won't we won't mention that too much. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, I mean I don't I didn't really aside from one monster fish coming up on a live bunker, I mean we really we haven't had much. the opportunity for that right fish just yeah. yet. And we didn't miss much. Not one of those days where we feel like God, a big one got away. And I tell you, I mean, Peter's got a bluefish in there that maybe he can handle also. Yeah. So we'll, Seems we'll, a pretty big bluefish. We'll grind it out and let's get back to work here and see if we can pick another fish. Yeah, last 20 minutes, let's make it work. Oh. And then we got a high speed run back. That's it.
When don't we have a high speed run? <laughs> That's true. Well, we just got back here, Chelsea Piers in Manhattan. And uh, you know, we had a really good day, guys. I know there were a couple bigger fish caught. There was a couple 30 pound fish caught. I think we came in either third or fourth on the, on the big fish. I think we might have grabbed the most fish by an angler for bass. You know, we. we well, maybe the most fish by boat by bass because we, we had 18 bass. 18 bass? How many bluefish? Uh, 10 bluefish. And I'll tell you, you guys did a great job. Yeah. I can't thank you guys enough. Yeah, you know, you're on to be. Got to be breaking by now. We have that fish here. Kyle, Kyle did a great job today. Also, Kyle, when's the last time you caught 150 bunker? <laughs> That's basically what we put him through today. Look at this, right out of the tube. Look at the life on this fish. Ugh. Now this is what? F five hours in that tube, Oh, man, this fish looks like four. he's just gonna take off and go. Four hours in the tube? Now who had the Pete, Mitch, who had that one? Uh, this was Mitch's was fish. Mitch, reach down here and say goodbye to that fish. That was your fish. Get him on his way, just put his head down and give him a push. He'll his be fin's fine. up, he's ready to roll. Thank you for watching. You can use the buttons below to subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch more videos, or to learn more about the location, techniques, and gear as seen in this video.